这是哦，没有过，都没多钱，我记录。像这种你看看，房租费你交不交？我得干十年。On January 8, 2024, China's Netties released a documentary with the headline, 30 Years of Working Like This, with a subtitle, Herfei Migrant Workers' Survival Story, Waiting for Work Starts at 4 a.m., and Some Can't Afford to Pay the 380 Yuan Health Insurance. The documentary focused on the survival of China's grassroots laborers. It resonated with the public and ignited widespread discussion. But the next day, on January 9, 2024, the video was removed. At the same time, all related discussions and comments, including those on the Jihu website, a Quora-like website, were cleared out. On January 10th, after the documentary was deleted, Chinese media outlet China Business Network, CBN, followed up with another similar documentary, titled Migrant Workers Waiting for Work on the Roadside in the Early Hours of the Morning. It documented the survival story of migrant workers in a different province and continued to raise awareness for the lower-class migrant workers. CBN is part of the propaganda department of the Shanghai Municipal Committee of the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP. So, why does the official financial media have to behave in such a high-profile way, going against the so-called positive energy propaganda touted by the government? Recently, there has been a major incident in China's media circle. A series of heavyweight articles against the policies of the Xi Jinping government were published. Some have been taken down, while others have so far managed to survive. So, what's going on in China's political arena? We'll talk about the phenomena of media revolt in the second half of this episode. First, let's take a look at the documentary, 30 Years of Working Like This, that has been taken off the airwaves. The documentary was filmed in Hefei, Anhui province. There are three major hubs for migrant workers in this city. Here, at a busy intersection, in the morning, about a thousand migrant workers were looking for work. Under the flyover, people were waiting for their daily wages to be settled. There's no work. You see? You see? What's the matter with it? People are worried about it. I can't sleep. I keep checking my watch. I'm afraid I'll oversleep. I woke up at 4 o'clock and came here. I feel exhausted mentally. The video mainly focused on three migrant workers. In addition to Ms. Dong, there are two other gentlemen, one surnamed Wang who was working in the city for more than 10 years, and the other is a carpenter who has been working in the city for 33 years. My family has little land, no land, no income. I can't make much money doing odd jobs at home. I've been in her Hefei for at least 10 years. My wife left a long time ago. I kicked her out. Are you a carpenter? You should contact him, the workmate. I know, he told me to come here. You contact him. There is no work to do. He won't tell me straight, right? He didn't let me go with him. He kept my number. He won't necessarily give me the job. He might be just here to check out the price. Carrying heavy loads upstairs or taking out garbage, any odd jobs. An offer of 100 or 200 yuan, I'll do them all. I am not picky. 
I didn't make any money last month. The village asked me for medical insurance payment. I haven't paid yet. It's 380 yuan or $53 a year. The village sent me a message to pay for it. I haven't been able to find work. I haven't paid yet. The main thing is that there are fewer developers now, so there is less work for migrant workers. There is another man in the video. He provides free meals to these migrant workers who are out looking for work. During the time when Hefei was locked down due to the epidemic, there were some seniors who couldn't find work. Basic living was becoming difficult, so I thought of making a big pot of food, I guess. Then, when they can't find any work, they can come here and have a meal. I started doing this at the beginning of this year. The number of people eating was small in the beginning, but now the number of people is getting bigger and bigger, with the highest number being over 200. I asked one of them, you're 65, 68 years old, you still come out to work, why? He said he was trying to make some money to support his wife in her old age. I asked, what about your children? He said, children have their own burdens, and they have their own pressures and stresses. It is already hard enough for young people to support their own families. It's not that they don't want to help their parents, but they just can't afford to. Why don't these migrant workers find a permanent job, but prefer to suffer the cold and heat every day soliciting odd jobs at this intersection? The main reason is that this population belongs to a group eliminated by the labor market. They are the first generation of migrant workers born before the 1970s. They went to work in the cities in the 80s and 90s. Many of them have been working for more than 30 years. The period of their young adulthood when they were most able to earn money coincided with the 30 years of China's fastest urban development. But how much did the dividends of the times bring them? They have worked for over half of their lifetime, but they haven't been able to save any money. And they have become the forgotten generation. When I was anxious, I lost my voice. Once I got this disease, I couldn't get rid of it. My family told me to go to the hospital to check it out, but I didn't go. It'll cost more than 600 or 700 yuan, or 80 to 90 dollars. Where am I supposed to make the money? You see, there's no work today, no work. The work I've done is not enough for food, and I can't even pay my rent. I haven't paid my rent for the past two months. My daughter-in-law asked me if I had any money left. I told her that my money wasn't enough to buy plain buns, not to mention buy good food. If I want to get something decent, I don't know how to afford it. How big is this group? According to the Chinese media, it is over 86 million people. Of course, the Netties documentary didn't dare to make it explicit. It only borrowed the words of Mr. Chen, the free lunch provider, and mentioned that nowadays construction sites don't allow migrant workers over 55 years old to enter the site. Hefei has three major centers for migrant workers. At this intersection alone, there are close to a thousand migrant workers in a morning. In general, they are relatively old. They are all over 55 years old. They can only do some hard labor and odd jobs such as taking down walls, demolition, garbage removal, landscaping, or at the construction site. They have to sneak into construction sites as there are strict rules now that anyone over 55 years old isn't allowed to work in construction sites. There is another reason which the Netties documentary didn't dare to mention, but it was pointed out by the CBN report. That is the fear of old wages. Random interviews by reporters have found that many migrant workers have had the experience of being old wages and unable to collect them. This labor market provides daily settlement. It means one can get paid right after finishing the work, avoiding the risk of being unable to collect one's old wages. Chinese rural workers are at the bottom of the labor ladder. During the period of rapid economic development in China, unpaid wages were one of the major problems that the government had neither the ability nor the will to solve. The problem is even more grave now that the economy is in recession.
You see, these companies are all crooks and rascals. They don't pay us what they owe us. They're liars. They're shameless. Everyone, take a look. This is a developed city in eastern China. A construction project owes workers wages, and the workers went to the construction site to collect their wages. The police at the local police station not only did not help the workers, but also followed them to interfere with their protest and prevent them from causing any disturbance. The migrant workers ask, "Isn't there anyone who cares about our hard-earned money?" In southwest China, in Chongqing City, a post and telecommunications university expansion project has owed migrant workers wages for most of the year. A large number of workers gathered outside the university gate to collect their wages until dark at night. In the central province, after the construction of homes in a neighborhood was completed, workers came to demand their wages outside the developer's gate as their wages were delayed. In the southern manufacturing province of Guangdong, wage collectors are seen everywhere as the Chinese New Year approaches. Some of them sat on the edge of the roof of a square building, showing their determination to jump from the building if that's what it takes to collect their wages. Some gathered in front of the local government. But the biggest problem with the day job is that the pay is very low, without job security. Hefei is a city that is emerging very fast in central China, so it attracts a lot of laborers. In the past, those who were looking for work would come to this market and get work on the same day. But slowly, the situation has changed. For example, if a job requires 10 people, there will be 200 people competing for it. As a result, the price of labor has been pushed lower and lower. According to both documentaries by Netties and CBN, the daily wages of rural migrant workers have been slashed to less than twenty-five dollars a day. And despite the price being so low, it's not always easy to get a job. In the video, this forty-nine-year-old carpenter doesn't just take up carpentry work; he takes up any job that comes his way. I'll dig holes for you until you're satisfied. What do you care about a few tens of dollars? I'll take a taxi, following you. To go this afternoon, the price is 150 yuan or 21 dollars per person. We'll see if we need it again tomorrow. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Through fierce competition, the carpenter finally got the job. Because of the long distance, he asked the recruiter to pay for the cab, which he and another rural worker rode in. Soon, he got a call from the recruiter, who said that the boss had found someone else to do the job and that he was no longer needed. The carpenter got out of the cab and said to the driver, "Consider you gave us a lift." The recruiter said that he would pay for the cab. One can see that the carpenter was frustrated and embarrassed. Why are you filming such embarrassing things? We are just like begging for food, right? Isn't doing this kind of work like begging for food? By 4 p.m., those who didn't get work dispersed. Ms. Dong said that her life was just one day at a time, and she lives one day at a time. Of the three laborers featured in the documentary, the lucky one is Mr. Wang. He didn't wait in vain. After all, he found work. The work I did today was all concrete, and I was so tired that I couldn't even move a brick. Mr. Wang has a son and a daughter. The son had a baby when he was 14 years old, so now the grandfather has his son and his grandson living with him. Stay here for a bit. You don't even want to have a chat with me. What to say? Get out. Now I still have to stay alive and live well. I have a daughter in school. I still have to work for ten more years. Compared to our show, Nettie's documentary is quite subtle and mild. However, even such a mild presentation isn't allowed in Red China, which is turning to the left quickly. The CCP is worried that this kind of video will trigger public resentment. Can you tell how worried the CCP is? In a local restaurant, kitchen knives are chained up. Let's go back to CBN. 
This official media outlet, part of the Shanghai Municipal Party Committee's propaganda department, seemed to have ignored the signals when NetEase's video was quickly removed from the airwaves. The next day, it published a nearly identical report, but it was about a different city. However, by January 11th, this report on migrant workers in the CBN was also removed. This isn't the first time that CBN has sung the opposite tune from Xi Jinping's central government since the start of 2024. At the end of 2023, there was a rather sensational story in China's media industry. The president of Caixing Weekly is a woman surnamed Hu. She is well known in China's media and political circles. For many years, Tai Xin had been supporting the line of reform and opening up advocated by Deng Xiaoping, the former CCP leader. She is considered a reformist within the party. She herself belongs to the circle of the second generation of the Reds. At the end of 2023, the CCP officially commemorated Mao's birthday in a high-profile manner. On December 25, 2023, the day before Mao's birthday, Tsai Shen Weekly published an editorial entitled Revisiting the Line of Seeking Truth Through Facts. It quoted Deng Xiaoping's remarks seeking truth through facts several times, and also quoted Xi's words, Going against the seeking of truth through facts will mislead the party and the country. It was actually hinting criticism of Xi. The article was quickly taken down. Who didn't seem to be intimidated. On the last day of 2023, a year-end feature editorial entitled Farewell in 2023 was published. It listed all the prominent Chinese and foreign figures who passed away in the past year, with the late Premier Li Keqiang at the top of the list. The article was quickly deleted as well. Moreover, whose personal Weibo page was then wiped clean. On the third day after the deletion of Farewell in 2023, that is January 3rd, CBN published an editorial titled, The Best Promised is to Let Go and Delegate Power. It was perceived as a show of support for Tsai Xin. The article pointed out that the history of China's economic takeoff was the history of the government's decentralization. The best pledge to private enterprises was to let go and deregulate. Although the decision makers had introduced a large number of policies to encourage and support the private economy in recent years, private enterprises failed to respond. The key to solving this problem was to restrain power and set the boundaries of its execution. Starting from January 4, 2024, Caixin.com has again started to serialize President Hu's work, retracing the exile path of our predecessors. As of January 9th, four articles were published. This gives the impression that President Hu has been gagged by the Xi administration, and it's possible that Xi herself has embarked on the road to exile. Some analysts believe that Hu is suspected of using her position as a member of the second generation of the Red Party to challenge Xi Jinping. How do we interpret this phenomena? On the one hand, we believe that the second generation of Reds now dare to openly challenge Xi is to a considerable extent in line with the current trend of public opinion against Xi Jinping. This is where their political energy lies. Xi's tendency to resemble the practices of the North Korean government is unacceptable to the majority of the Chinese public. On January 4th, 2024, stacks of Xi Jinping's books were seen thrown next to trash in a corner of a well-known university campus in northeastern China. The university organized a book donation charity event. It received a lot of Xi's work. In the end, no one wanted them, so they were tossed next to garbage bins. No matter which class of Chinese society starts to reflect, it is the beginning of an awakening and will become a force for dismantling the CCP regime. On the other hand, the second generation of the Reds seems to attribute all China's economic failures to Xi. As if by replacing Xi, the CCP can once again lead China to a global rise, and the elite, especially the rich and powerful, can return to the good old days. However, we believe that many major problems in China today have their roots laid since the reform and opening up of China, especially the development of China's real estate industry. From the experience of the first generation of migrant workers in China over the past 30 years, we can tell that under the CCP regime, the general public are only Chinese chives by nature. When the economy is good, they grow a little greener or bigger. When the economy is bad, the chives become thinner and weaker. 
But harvesting chives repeatedly is the never-ending operation of this red regime. Based on atheism, the CCP has severed the bloodline of the traditional Chinese culture and practiced the ideology of struggle against the universal values of humanity. These fundamental attributes of the CCP are the root cause of all the chaos in China today. Perhaps it would be better to throw the oath of membership to the CCP into the garbage bin as well.